So the next thing now will be to install the pedal assist sensor is going to install here in the bottom bracket area and um, yeah I'm not sure how it's going to work but we will have to to find out so I'm going to turn out turn the bike around in in the stand and start removing the cranks the drive side uh, crank and start working on the on the pedal assist sensor so I ended up ended up uh, removing the complete uh, bottom bracket because um, yeah, you just simply have to do that to get access to to either end and uh, or, or this was the drive side end and I first thought I would install the pass sensor there but looking at at this end there's really not much room here because the crank goes almost all the way and what I would need to do is to find room for the the plastic disc that holds the magnets here between uh, the crank and the flange here. So I'm thinking there might be more room here on the non-drive side. So I'm going to try to install it there first and if that doesn't work then try the other side and if that doesn't work either then we have to figure something out again. Uh, what you will want to do when you install uh, uh, a new bottom bracket uh, is to use either grease or what I did here something called metal free paste and that will prevent the bottom bracket from getting stuck there by time. Um, so use a bit of grease or metal free paste when you install your bottom bracket to make it easy to remove the next time you need to service it. Okay so the pass sensor consists of two components. First we have the, the sensor itself and that installs underneath the sort of mounting sleeve here. You can install it on either side depending on where you have more room and just eyeballing it I estimated I will have more room here on the non-drive side. So that's where I installed it. And here is a magnetic disc. It has a few magnets there and it shows the uh, direction of rotation as well. And I guess this holds true if you mount this on the drive side, like so. But now when we are mounting it on the non-drive side, I'm going to have to turn the disc like so and mount it the other way. And I'm hoping this won't make a difference in, in the function. I've seen the pass sensors installed on either side on, on other videos, so I'm guessing it should work fine here too. But So this is going to slide on here on the crank axle like so. And now, sorry, what we have to hope is that there's enough room for the crank itself to be mounted there too and tight it down properly and we are trying to create a, a suitable distance between the magnetic disc and the sensor down there. So the pass sensor is installed and um, this is really the only side there would be room for, for this disc uh, installed like this. On my other bike I have made a, a sort of custom plate which attaches instead of the the smallest chain ring there on the crank side and that works well too. So there is a bit of rub here this is not turning very smoothly anymore um, so it's probably rubbing the, the, the bottom bracket sleeve slightly maybe something that will get better by time but it's definitely not perfect just installed like this, like default sort of way. So I'm becoming more and more skeptic about this system. There are so many things which are not really flawless and you have to do a lot of DIY and lots of the solutions are not like best possible you would prefer to have. But let's move on. Now the next thing I guess is to mount the battery 
you have to remove the the bottle cage there and put the battery mount then and then solder on some uh, battery connections and start mounting the electronics and I probably want to do a short test before I do the final mounting of all the wires just to see if the, if the motor works okay it's all hooked up all wires are connected uh, it looks pretty pretty doesn't it here you can see that it's quite a challenge then to um, make this mess into a nice looking package there's a lot of sort of excess extra wire you have to hide somewhere to make it look decent and um, let's take a look at the, the connections here uh, the kit is made uh, nicely in that way that uh, you can only connect all these wires in the right way it's impossible for example this is the LCD screen connector there's just one other connect connector that matches that one this is the pass sensor connector and even thus though it looks like this a lot there are a lot of other ones that looks the same in the end actually there's only one connector that will connect to this uh, these are uh, two pin connectors uh, there is one other three pin connector but it's a male one and it's impossible to do do the connection the wrong way and here is the is the motor wire so spinning the cranks uh, nothing happens and it turns out spinning the cranks backwards makes the motor run so it turns out it does matter the the direction of rotation here on this magnetic disc it does matter so what I will try to do now is just to flip it around and see if if these magnets um, are strong enough to engage the motor even if they are not faced towards the sensor here so other than that it's spinning pretty nicely I think sounds good just annoying the the rear disc brake rotor is rubbing because it's out of true quite badly so I'll see if I can do something about that then later but now the next thing is to flip that uh, magnetic uh, disc and see if we manage to get this running when we are spinning the crank the way we are supposed to okay the disc is flipped the magnets are now facing outwards and I'm wondering if uh, that matters are they strong enough to make contact with the sensor there the sensor is there let's try it yes it looks like the pass sensor works nicely either way but you have to pay attention to the rotation that does matter so we have a working system now and um, yeah I'm just trying to make it as beautiful as possible okay so here's one more thing I decided to do before installing the the non-drive side crank as I was mentioning earlier the action was a little bit sticky uh, when the crank was tightened properly all the way down uh, it would uh, rub on, on, on the plastic disc and the plastic disc would rub on the bottom bracket sleeve and the cranks just wouldn't <coughs> wouldn't rotate as freely as they normally do and when I uh, flipped around the disc uh, the outcome was even worse for some reason resulting in that the disc would be jammed here even though you would spin the cranks and of course then there is no uh, action from the motor at all so I spent one minute in the belt sander and removed a little bit of material here from the, the inner face of the non-drive side crank arm and um, I just tightened it down uh, a minute ago to see if it made any difference and I think it did and it seems to be spinning as freely as it, it normally does now with that little little uh, material removed so 
that might be one other thing you will end up doing here. Okay, this is it. Uh, the bike is now ready. It's all wired up. You can see how I wired the LCD screen wire. I paired it with the, the rear brake cable using electrical tape and then fasten it on these mounting points for the rear brake cable. Then I routed the battery wires and the pass sensor inside this uh, kind of cable shield or something like that. I don't know exactly what that's called. And uh, on the other side here you can see the, the motor wire. It goes along the chain stays and then everything is tucked up in this little frame bag here. So uh, if you take a look a bit farther away it's a pretty clean install but always on these normal bikes it's difficult to really really hide all the electronics but I'm pretty happy with with the end result so I'm now ready to hand over the bike to my brother and he's going for his first test ride <laughs> 